when you started, uh, you know, you, you got your R Reggie Parks title and you started working, you know, making these titles for, for the indie shows, what was kind of your first big break uh, in making belts? I think probably uh, get, getting to be friends with Jerry Lawler. Um, mm. He he was the first guy to ever put anything that I did on television, which was at the time really just fixing up some of his old belts. Uh, but he believed in me and uh, and and gave me a chance. And there was no, um, you know, there was no big initiation, no big, uh, well, can you do this or can you do that? It was like, OK, you know, I've seen your stuff. Hey, man, take these USWA tag team belts and put them on new leather for me and, and polish them up. I don't like that paint scheme. Will you change that for me, too? Mm. And that kind of thing. And so we started we started there until it was time to start replacing belts. And then, you know, that's where I got got the shot a little bit more, but, uh, it, it still really started, uh, with, with, uh, Jerry putting my stuff out there and, and being willing to, to do that. And, um, and also endorse me to other people in the business, uh, that were interested in or needed some work done. So when you mentioned that, like, okay, so now you're fixing up the USWA tag titles and now you have to make one, I'm, I'm assuming what you said is you have to make a new title for, or whatever it is. That, yeah. So, so yeah. are you in charge of the design of this and kind of how do you go about that? Um, yeah. In that, in that case, cause, cause they didn't really care if it was, you know, it was a, it was a time, uh, of course this is already into the late nineties and I've done some other stuff, uh, outside of Memphis really, but nothing notable. Um, and it was if it was shiny and it looked good on television, that's all they cared about. You right, know, right, 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 right. And nobody was nobody was micromanaging. And really, that's the Reggie way too. I mean, so many designs that people uh, that that are people look at are you know iconic championship belt designs were an afterthought to Reggie because um, you know the the classic winged eagle title they call it the you know the Bret Hart belt or the the Shawn Michaels or the people you associate that winged eagle title belt with uh, was a phone call from uh, Chief Jay Strongbow to Reggie saying we want a belt where the eagle consumes the main plate hmm. and the rest of it was Reggie and his team and it kind of in Memphis it was the same way it's like uh, we need a new USWA heavyweight belt what can you do for us <laughs> Right, you know, right, right. and that was, and that was it. It was just left up to me, which, um, you know, was, was pretty easy to do in those days. There was no micromanaging. It's interesting that, that Eagle belt, the last person to ever hold it was me. Is uh, that, oh, the, you had the bigger one. You had the, you had the Joe Marshall one. Yeah. That was okay. The, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 You had the bigger, you had the upgrade, the one that uh, started with, uh, with stone cold. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, my gosh, too. You know, speaking of championships, to beat the uh, Stone Cold and the Rock in one night. Come on, man. <laughs> well, and, and the funny thing was, so for that whole time frame of being the undisputed champion, I had to carry the the, the Eagle, which you said it's the Joe Joe Marshall, yeah, Joe Marshall, and then there was also the WCW title which, as well, right? Which was cast off the old original Ric Flair belt. Heavy, both of them just heavy as hell. Very, very heavy. So I had to carry all, and listen, I'm not complaining, but I, for about four months, I had to carry both of those through the airports. And then the day I lost it to Triple H, they then gave him a brand new title. Undisputed. Was, yeah, undisputed title. Right. <laughs> Amalgamation <laughs> of the two. I was the last guy that had to carry both those things around. Yes, there. you were. <laughs> so when did you kind of graduate uh, out of uh, Memphis? Did you go make some stuff for, for WCW first or for WWE or for both? I was kind of on the tail end of the um... – the WWE breakup, we call it, uh, that they had uh, become unhappy that Reggie wouldn't sign a contract. Um, he'd never signed a piece of paper to make anybody a belt. He didn't want to start. And there were a couple of other issues there where he would make those designs for anybody that, that asked him. Um, and you're talking still in a mostly pre-internet age. So, um, you know, I was kind of in on that stuff, but they all still had Reggie's name on them, and and uh, I was just the the protege. So, um, you know, I did some I did some stuff. I think around that time, you know, some stuff in Japan. Uh, so I think GHC had started uh, popping up Global Honored Crown, and uh, probably some of the earlier New Japan stuff, and and things like that. Uh, you know, and then 
y- y- there's always the indie shows, which had gotten bigger and better. And, mm. and so, you know, there's that. And then, um, gosh, NWA, TNA, UFC, uh, from the wow. time that the Zufa organization had bought out UFC, they came to us and we started making their belts and they would order six, uh, and we'd finish those six, they'd order six more. And we did that for 10 years. So that was a steady job in itself. Um, and that kept Reggie and I both busy, uh, doing those for years. Um, so you, you have that. And in the meantime, TNA pops up and you do everything for them for years and WWE comes back around and, uh, start doing stuff for them again. 